to um, present our presenter, uh, Katarina Gozzi. Uh, Katarina holds uh, multiple degrees in, and is a postdoctoral research fellow at the Center for Scientific Dialogue and Research um, in the Cyprus. Uh, she also works uh, on the research program Excellence, Reinv Reinventing Age of Traveling, Paths of the Levant in the D Digital Era, the example of Cyprus. And Katerina uh, prepared her presentation together with Margarita Janu, uh, who is an attendee during the, uh, this session. So uh, Katerina will be presenter, and we have also Margarita for the further discussion. Recreating post-pandemic tourists through the use of travel texts. So Katerina, the screen is yours. Okay, thank you so much. So nice to see you all. So I'm going to share my screen, hopefully. Okay, is the sound okay for a start? Yes, it's okay. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. that's a good start. Okay, just give me one minute. Okay. Um, just... Okay, should be this one. Okay, just give me one minute and it is here, okay. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, travel text, travel writing, and how um, it would be possible. Okay, so uh, I will need to share with all panelists, right? So can everybody see that now? I'm just sharing. I guess, should I click on all panelists? Uh, I see everything and... Yes, but you are the host, so I'm not sure if the panelists can see that. So I've just clicked on all panelists so that everybody can see it. Start sharing uh, with someone else and sharing. Peter, Peter writes that everything is okay. Good, good. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to talk about um, using travel writing uh, in post-pandemic tourism and how we could do that and why we could do that. Okay. Um, so um, travel writing, let's talk about travel writing first. Travel writing is a hybrid, um, a fluid, a highly adaptable form. Although it is actually hard to define the exact boundaries of the uh, genre of von Martel's comments, it is generally understood what travel writing contains. Scholars, however, over the years have come up with diverse lists of genres that could qualify as travel writing. These include travel guidebooks, personal essays, travel magazines, including the promotional airline and airport ones, travel brochures, journal entries, newspaper and magazine travel articles, travelogues, travel reviews, coffee table photo books, memoirs, novels, travel TV shows, and documentaries. Researchers have found it difficult to provide a full and accurate definition of travel writing long before the digital era. Defining travel writing in the 21st century, however, becomes a real challenge. Uh, as our perception of travel texts changes dramatically in terms of content, in terms of form, uh, means of dissemination, as well as in terms of target audiences. Due to this hybridity of the genre, as well as the ease with which one can describe himself or herself as a travel writer, travel writing wasn't, until not until recently, taken very seriously as a literary genre. With a dramatic increase in travel writing in recent years, there are even concerns that the more accessible it is and the more people it is practiced by, the more it loses its value. At the outset of the 21st century, new channels of online communication forcefully emerged and pervaded all aspects of traveling and writing. The evolution, the widespread accessibility and use of the internet, and later the mobile internet, proved to be a catalyst in travel writing as in almost all human activities. Travel texts from previous centuries, long stored, maintained, or even forgotten in museums and library archives are gradually being digitized and uploaded online, becoming thus for the first time in human history instantly accessible to anyone across the globe. Travel magazines and travel books of any sort, travel guides, for example, travelogues, novels, collections of travel texts, Along with their hard copy versions, they can now uh, be purchased or accessed for free and read in digital form as well. 
Now, along with the travel texts, which are um, available online, although they were initially designed to be read in print, the internet has allowed for previously unknown types of born digital materials um, that appear in natively digital mediums. Social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Flickr, YouTube, uh, as well as uh, travel blogs, travel websites that host travelers' reviews, TripAdvisor being um, the most well-known one, are at present very widely used, especially by younger people, as having an online presence and sharing one's message through media are key aspects of being a socially connected young person. Social media undoubtedly brought a revolution in human communication as they enabled the instant interaction among users. The participatory cultural model is often opposed to the mass media and broadcasting model typical of newspapers, radio and television, when there is just one sender and many recipients, but no communication among them. Travel blogs, often part of travel websites, um, also host travel texts and photos, but differ from social media in several respects. First, the target audience of the travel blogs is not limited to selected family and friends. The blogs are open for everyone to read online. They're also more flexible as to the type and amount of text they can accommodate. Blog posts may be written by professional, by semi-professional and amateur authors. It seems, however, that it is the amateurs who have mostly influenced the form. Travel narratives may be hosted on platforms or on blogs managed and updated by the bloggers themselves. Setting up a blog does not require advanced computer knowledge. Different apps and websites often offer for free, attractive and easy to use, ready-made or custom-made templates and graphs offering the possibility to bloggers without much technical expertise to run their own blogs with ease. Travel writing has often since the 1990s received criticism for what is perceived as lack of truthfulness and lack of credibility as the boundaries between um, fact and fiction have never been very, very clear. Different scholars have pointed this out, for example, um, Holland and Hagen see travel writing as a form that freely mixes fact and fable, anecdote and analysis, commenting also on its intermediary status between subjective inquiry and objective documentation. Meister comments that the distinction between fact and fiction in travel books or travel books is not always a clear cut one. Thompson suggests that fictions and outright lies may be woven into travel writings ostensibly factual representation of the wider world. Von Martels wonders if we should still speak of travel writing where the distinction between travel writing and fiction becomes small and the novel comes into being. And finally, uh, Kiriko prefers to use the term travel narrative instead of travel writing or travel text or travel law. Still, what we mean to point out is that it is this subjectivity and diversity of travel texts, all those different perspectives they bring that make travel writing so fascinating to study and so useful tourism wise. Especially the 21st century opened up possibilities to the researchers that were unknown before. It paved the way for a diversity of different and often exciting voices to emerge, voices that were difficult to ignore. Now, along with uh, Margarita Ioano, who's the principal researcher, we're currently working on the Excellence Hubs Research Program, uh, Retropath. Uh, the full title is Reinventing Age-Old Traveling Paths of the Levant in the Digital Era, the example of Cyprus. This project is coordinated by the Bank of Cyprus Cultural Foundation, and it is co-financed by the European Regional Development Fund and the Republic of Cyprus through the Research and Innovation Foundation. Our research focuses on travel texts on Cyprus produced from the 15th century to the modern society of information. Our primary sources are published books written in various European languages by travelers who visited Cyprus between the 15th and the 20th century, as well as published and electronic texts of the 21st century that include books and ebooks, travel blogs and travel vlogs, 
online newspaper and magazine travel articles, podcasts, documentaries, travel TV shows, and YouTube videos. What we aim to do is to unveil aspects of Cyprus and its people long forgotten, neglected, or overlooked. Our study of travel texts spanning seven centuries will lead to safe conclusions about the movement of ideas, dominating processes, and evolution of content and structure of travel texts through time. The program's ambition is to provide a comparative analysis of the old, rare travel books and the new forms of travel writing. And at the same time, to spark the interest of modern travelers in Cyprus through the creative exploitation of the results. Now, the diversity of the voices examined is particularly interesting. Alongside the travel books written by usually middle-aged or even elderly intellectual male most of the time writers in previous centuries, we have the freshness and often the easiness in every sense of the videos produced by younger vloggers. Alongside the professional voice of journalists writing for the Times, for the Guardian, the National Geographic, uh, the French uh, Le Figaro or the Italian Corriere della Sera, we have the voices of young mothers who travel with babies and toddlers, and they want to share their experiences either through an ebook or through their travel blogs. There are bloggers who encourage the readers to bathe uh, in sunscreen once in Cyprus because of the excessively hot weather on the island. And there are journalists from the Gulf states where it is uh, even hotter, uh, so that they advertise Cyprus as a quick getaway to cooler climates. We have the voices of those who travel on a very tight budget and try hitchhiking, although not all the time with much luck, and those on luxury vacation who propose helicopter rides. All these travel writers in the wider sense of the world shed light on different aspects, different views and different realities of Cyprus, enriching our perspectives and views of the island. The information and insights contained in travel texts involve all categories of tangible and intangible cultural heritage as defined by UNESCO. The travel writers often provide their own accounts of well-known monuments, archaeological sites, works of art, like sculptures and paintings hosted in galleries and museums, shipwrecks and underwater ruins, performing arts and local rituals oral traditions, physical, biological, or geological formations. What they eventually offer is not just a distanced objective description, but their own experience of cultural heritage, their own perspective. This is what they bring to the table. Given the plurality of voices, travel literature, whether contemporary or age old travel texts, gives a fuller view of a destination. Not only what the place looked like, but also how people lived, worked, and operated in it. What a square has been looking across the centuries, how people have been provided with fresh water, what kind of objects one could buy in a commercial street at different times, which places people have been socializing in throughout the centuries, what they have been looking like, how they have been interacting with one another. The stories contained in travel books, always informed by the traveler's perspective, can help recreate a place and see it from new and interesting angles. We need to say that our study of the travel texts on Cyprus helped us identify secret patterns of behavior that we hadn't noticed before, as well as understand and explain behaviors and everyday habits of the Cypriots. For the project we are working on, we examine 220 such travel texts on Cyprus produced from the 15th century until 2021. Uh, this includes 130 books, 30 travel blogs and travel websites, 30 newspaper and magazine, um, uh, magazine travel articles, 30 documentaries, TV travel shows, YouTube videos and podcasts on Cyprus. We subsequently created a database and we indexed all the information in Cyprus. Under more, 
uh, provided under more than 120 categories related to residence and travel, natural space, habitation, society, nutrition, apparel and health, finance, education, religion, arts and sciences, politics, history and archaeology. There are more than 120 categories. We subsequently examined this huge volume of data, both synchronically and diachronically. The synchronic study revealed what travelers at a certain moment in time saw when they visited Cyprus, or what they actually chose to see depending on the time of the visit, their age, their gender, place of origin, socio-cultural background, studies, hobbies, interests, and their general outlook on life. The diachronic examination of those texts on top of whatever the synchronic study has to offer also offered insights on the evolution of Cyprus throughout the centuries. This database, along with our research findings, will be made available to researchers as well as tourism practitioners in Cyprus. Now, travel texts of any kind produced in any time period and made available in any form, digital or otherwise, may prove a very useful tool when it comes to tourism. The information and insights the authors provide, whether examined synchronically or diachronically or both, may be used in a number of different ways. The most obvious way is through travel marketing. The travel blog posts, instantly accessible and regularly updated as they are, are already used by tourism practitioners across the globe. The suggestions that the, that the bloggers make already function as a roadmap, as a barometer for travel agents and tour operators. The travel text could, could go further than just feeding travel blog brochures with sites and experiences. The wealth of information provided in the travel texts may be used in a number of ways in tourism. It could help tourism practitioners and local authorities create innovative, custom-made, guided, thematic tours. It may help local or national tourism boards or other authorities organize training programs for tour guides and tourism professionals and tour operators expanding their perspectives on what a particular destination has to offer. The travel texts may be the raw material based on which cultural organizations may launch seminars and educational programs and design activities aimed at both tourists and locals blending these two communities. It could also help local authorities uh, or tourism professionals create digital education, educational games and applications. The educational games may be meant for locals and tourists alike. They may be addressing different age groups, kids, teenagers, young adults, or even elderly people. People of all ages are now familiar with technology, especially after the pandemic, and they all enjoy playing regardless of age. They may address general audiences or be adjusted to suit the needs of more specialized audiences. They may be digital only, or they may be combined with on-site activities and games. They may even come in a varying level of difficulty. The possibilities are endless. In Retropath, apart from the digitization of a number of earlier travel texts um, that will thus be made publicly available online, we opted for the creation of interactive maps and digital games based on our research findings that could be perfectly used in tourism. Considerable effort is being made to involve audiences in the dissemination and acquisition of knowledge through interactive means. The digital game and the interactive maps aim to make um, legible to audiences not previously acquainted with travel literature, some fascinating or surprising aspects of travel literature about Cyprus. Also, the ways that the travelers gaze towards Cyprus changes depending on a number of conditions that have emerged from the research, for example, gender, profession, specific interests, affiliations, etc. And also, we mean to open up a dialogue between the researchers community and wider, or wider audiences. 
the outcomes uh, will find, firstly be disseminated through the Bank of Cyprus Cultural Foundation's actions and subsequently they will be offered to professionals and travel associations throughout Cyprus. Now, the prolonged COVID period and the isolation it brought about globally has undis indisputably affected travel and tourism. The amount of research carried out within the last 18 months on the impact of COVID on tourism is impressively enormous for such a short period of time. Interestingly, the developments of the pandemic have been moving faster than the research could, often resulting in some of the outcomes sounding obsolete by the time a paper was published. This is why all assumptions we make should be made with caution, since the full impact of the tourist psyche cannot be reliably predicted at this point in time. What is undeniable and confirmed by recent bibliography is that the absence of culture has been very acutely felt, especially during the lockdowns. The internet has provided a great service indeed, undoubtedly bringing on our screen world-class performances, exhibits from the most important museums globally, talks, seminars, and virtual walks in all kinds of indoor or outdoor places. It also kept people and communities in touch with one another, Obviously, this was a good substitute in such a time of crisis, but the experience obviously was far from the real thing. The prolonged isolation left global populations traumatized and in need of the healing power of connection with people and places, culture and human stories. Haywood uses Biddle's song Come Together and assists on the importance of togetherness in the post-COVID era a new connectivity to people and places. One quite solid assumption to make is that consuming a la carte experiences won't be enough in the post-COVID period. Tourists will presumably need a new connection with places, their past, their present, and their people and their stories. And this is where travel writing may come in because these are stories of people who visited places, the same places with us, but long before us, and they socialized with the locals who are not there anymore to tell their stories. So what the travel writers transfer on paper is not just a postcard-like description of a place, but what it really felt like to be there, what they thought, what they felt, what they laughed at, what exasperated them, what made them cry. If we insisted a lot in this paper on the subjective character of travel texts, it is because we feel that this one, that this is one of their strengths, not one of their weaknesses, especially during a pandemic when everything we took for granted seems to have turned upside down. As our research has shown, old and forgotten travel texts being unearthed and examined uh, hand in hand with contemporary digital texts may uh, have very exciting stories to tell about a place and its people. Stories that the post-COVID traveler would enjoy at a time when sandy beaches, all night clubbing, and plainly walking around museums probably won't be enough. Technology, this is a good moment because technology provides a means to tell these stories in all new, innovative, creative, and surprising ways and make the tourists see a place from completely different angles. After all, this is what traveling is all about, seeing a place from different angle. And this is what we've really missed as looking at the world through our screens. Unfortunately, there is only one angle we can see, that of our camera. Thank you. Thank you, Katarina, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, there was a lively discussion in the chat box, if you Ooh. I missed that. Okay. Uh, should I stop sharing so I see that? Because uh, I can't see that now. Uh, yes, you can stop sharing and okay. um, look in the chat box. Okay, just give me one minute. Okay. Um, oh. So I think you uh, has uh, triggered some uh, discussion. Mm -hmm about the roots and the okay. beginning of travel writing because you were uh, talking about the 15th century yes. text and then the discussion uh, was about uh, where should be really searching for the beginnings of the travel uh, oh. writing. 
things. So uh, early travel writing is actually the expertise of Margarita Ioan, who's around. Uh, but I think that this is where we have, as, um, as far as Cyprus is concerned, I guess this is when we have the first printed texts. Uh, although this is not exactly my field of expertise. So, um, but I think this is when we start having travel texts. People wanted to share their experiences um, even centuries ago. But OK, the writers had a completely different profile, of course, and the type of writing, the type of text were completely different. Mm -hmm. So I see that, uh, that uh, Margarita also wrote um, that uh, you used printed books. So. Yes. So I yes, I examined printed books and ebooks. I examined uh, both printed books and ebooks and digital forms um, as well. Okay. Uh, remember that this is a project on Cyprus. Okay, so the research material focuses on Cyprus. So uh, we worked on what there is available on Cyprus. Okay. Uh, I see that uh, Lucia Goodlin uh, writes um, diaries with drawings like Piranesi, but also one of my friends who instead of taking pictures makes drawings. Ah. I wish I could too. Okay. Uh, um, people have a need to write their impressions down and we should provide them an option that is not just commenting on Google Maps. So thank okay. you yeah, for your comment. Okay, so I just saw a comment uh, on uh, Odyssey on Odysseus, which is interesting. Well, actually, Odysseus is the first, is an archetypal traveler. The reason why we, we haven't included it, obviously, in the scope of our research, um, the, we've got fiction and nonfiction. This is fiction. Uh, first of all, it is not in the scope of our research because we examine travel texts on Cyprus and we focus on nonfiction texts. Um, there have been, uh, in recent years, and have been novels um, by people who travel, but they, have, they, they are fiction. Okay, so we didn't include fiction in our research, although this is a very interesting, this is very interesting as well. When we said fiction, uh, when I talked about fiction, I mean something which is not exactly true, but novels is a completely different thing. Uh, epic poetry like uh, Homer's Odyssey is a completely different thing. So yes, he was the first traveler, the archetypal tra traveler, um, but this is fiction. Thank you very much, uh, Katerina. Uh